welcome back to the channel, movie friends and pals and buddies. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to be doing a reaction to, yet again, another Mr. Uh, Nightmare uh, video. And it's going to be talking about three true scary stories of uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Um, I just want to say one thing. I have been to Chuck E. Cheese, but it's been like, God, I don't know. It's been forever since I've been to a Chuck E. Cheese, but that's probably because uh, it's more of like a kid's place anyway. But um, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and share a small story about it. Um, when I was living in Tennessee, uh, we had a place called Looney Birds, and it was kind of similar to Chuck E. Cheese. But then when the Chuck E. Cheese's, you know, that place showed up, it ran Looney Birds out of business. So... And that's probably because they had a lot more choices of games and food and activities and stuff like that. But anyway, without further ado, <clears throat> uh, let's get into this. Let's delve in. Let's dig in. Hmm. Remember Chuck E. Cheese? That yes, I do. That with the singing animatronics? Mm hmm Of course you do. I just found out they went bankrupt recently. It made me think back to my horrible experience there as a very little kid. Huh. I was no older than eight or nine. It was like my third and last time ever at a Chuck E. Cheese. This specific location closed down years ago, but it used to be basically down the street from our old house. My mom took my little brother and I, and she let us roam free and do our own thing and play the games while she sat at one of the tables reading like most of the other parents. <laughs> I was playing this clown game where you had to shoot the clown's teeth out with this little cannonball shooter. I was playing the game like that would fun. get me the most tickets for the prizes. I finished the game again, and the ticket shot out from the ticket slot. That's when I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned and jumped in my seat. I was greeted with a giant Chuck E. Cheese mascot in my face. He <laughs> held out his hand for a high five, and naturally I gave him his high five with a smile. He then pointed at the tickets and gave me a thumbs up. I think I just continued laughing and smiling and said, yeah. Then he pointed at the tickets once more and motioned for me to follow him. So I ripped the tickets from the slot and followed the giant mascot. Oh, hell no, you don't do that. He walked across the main floor. A couple other kids, around like six, came up to him saying, Hey Chucky, and he gave them both high fives. I kept following him, wondering if he'd tell the other kids to follow, but he didn't. He would turn back every few seconds to make sure I was still following. Finally, we made it across the main floor by the stage towards this back area, where he waved me to follow him through this employee's only door. <clears throat> From what I remember about how I was feeling, let's just say a combination of weird and excited. We entered this narrow hallway, and I felt kind of special for being allowed access back here. Keep in mind, I had the <laughs> mind and maturity of a very young child. Obviously. That led me to this back room, where he motioned for me to enter first. <clears throat> I did. It was this small changing room type of room. It had a few lockers on one wall, and one long bench extending half the length of the room. That was it. He entered the room and shut the door behind us, and I noticed he locked it. That's when I became confused and afraid. I thought he was taking me to get a bunch of free tickets. Mm -mm. What he possibly do in this empty room with me. He approached me, put his furry mascot hand on my shoulder, and then started rubbing from my shoulder to my arm. Then he seemed as though he tried to reach lower with both of his hands, and I pushed him off and yelled stop. That's when the person in the suit lifted the mask off his head, revealing some sweaty middle-aged man underneath. He started to remove the rest of the costume from himself as he told me to be quiet. I sat there watching, shaking, and plotting my way for the door. When I thought he was distracted enough by the suit, I tried to run past him for the door, but he grabbed me and told me to stop. He offered me all the free tickets I wanted if I just behaved. I started to yell and pound on the door. He tried to cover my mouth, but I think he gave up when he realized it wasn't worth the risk for him. I unlocked the door and ran back down the hall in tears. I ran back to my mom, yelling at her about what just happened. She was distraught and went right to the front desk. The girl at the front desk seemed to be in a panic as well, and I think she called for her supervisor. Pretty soon, all the music was stopped and the place was put into a lockdown of sorts. 
where all the were to go to their parents. A bunch of workers ran to the back section, and eventually police showed up outside. I had to give my whole story to a crowd of like six people, and I was extremely nervous. The man in the Chucky suit was some random creep who snuck into the back section of the building to dress in one of the suits and apparently lure children to the back. Realizing and looking back at that now as a grown adult is disturbing and disgusting that I was the victim of a predator. I never found out if that monster was caught. Damn. Yeah, see, I, you know, it, that's one of those things. It's just like you don't follow strangers in the back rooms, but... I used to work for mm. Chuck E. Cheese very briefly when I was 21 years old. I was one of the janitors slash maintenance workers. I know, not very awe-inspiring. I was broke as hell and needed money. All my job really entailed was cleaning tables and keeping the play areas generally clean. Sounds easy, but there was never really a time to just sit and take a breath. Yeah, that sounds pretty easy. There was easy, always but... something to clean or take care of. Kids, I would you also know. be in charge of turning on and off the animatronics, opening the stage curtains, fixing busted arcade machines, and things of that nature. Hmm. My shifts would always be later, from like 4 to 10 p.m. My location closed at 8 on weekdays and 9 on weekends. I would stay an hour, sometimes two hours after, to get the place in top shape ready for the next day. So this one night, I was working past clothes like I usually did. Everyone had already left the building, including the other workers, so I was the last one in the building. Hmm. I was dragging my cleaning cart around the arcade area. I had already turned off all the game machines. I was by that space-themed arcade machine where you had to press the button at the right moment to stop the light on the jackpot bulb. As I was passing by this machine, the space-themed music suddenly emits from the machine at a very loud volume, mm. and all the lights start flashing again. I felt like my heart was in my throat, that's how much it startled me. I fiddled with my keys to access the control port of the machine to turn it off again. I had never seen anything like that happen before. It mm. suddenly just freaked me out. Oh because yeah. Because I was all alone in that big building pretty late at night. And then all of a sudden so something makes loud noise. There, By this point in the night, I had already shut down the animatronics on the stage. So when I heard Chucky's pre-recorded laugh break the silence of the room, <laughs> my heart oh. started pounding again. The laugh was short and cut off. It almost sounded glitchy. I ditched my cleaning cart to go backstage and check on the animatronics. And I could see they were in their idle modes now meaning they would move their limbs and heads around every so often. I would have to go to the control room to turn them off, but this was the second strange thing to happen that night. I started getting paranoid that someone else was in the building with me. Yeah, that would freak me out too. And I noticed that the chunky mm. animatronic was facing me, and its head angled down perfectly to look as though it was looking at me. It was bizarre. Fuck that. Bizarre that I was finding it that disturbing. I'm not crazy. But for my own peace of mind, with my eyes on the Chucky animatronic, I walked past it, closer to the control room. I waited there for a few seconds, and then the animatronic spun 90 degrees to face me once more, perfectly. Mm. I swear it was once again looking right at me, and then the laughter emitted once again from the animatronic. <laughs> but in a creepy, glitchy, cut-off manner, this time much louder, obviously because I was right next to it. I ran to the control room to hit the switch to turn everything off on the stage once more. I left the control room, and the Chucky animatronic was still facing the direction it was moments before. I left the stage through mm. the curtain and just felt uneasy. Yeah, I, to think I would too, was man. Just getting to my head, but that's when I heard the horrible laugh again come from the stage behind the curtains. <laughs> that was the last straw. I took my card, clocked out, and left. I texted my boss the next day that I had to leave early because I was feeling extremely sick. He said it wasn't a problem, but he never mentioned anything about the animatronics being left on. And when I asked him if the animatronics had some kind of motion detecting feature to look at people, he said no, they didn't. Mm. I'm not the most superstitious guy, but I firmly believe mm. that I wasn't the only presence in that building that night. And I don't mean there was another person in there. D Okay, so that one got me. The hairs of my arms are standing up. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> no thank you. This is a story from my childhood that I don't like to look back on too much. I was 13. My mom brought my two little sisters and I to Chuck E. Cheese one evening. 
My sisters are four and six years younger than me, so it was more for them. And my mom just wanted me to come along. My mom was playing games with my sisters, so I went to do my own thing. It was my only time ever at Chuck E. Cheese, so I was trying to play every game at least once. That's the way to do it, man. A red polo shirt came up to me. He was in his lower to mid-twenties, I'd say. He didn't seem that old. He asked me if I wanted some more tokens. I said, yeah, sure. He told me to follow him. He led me through this sketchy back door, which led to a back exit. I asked him where he was leading me. He said to his truck. He told me not to tell anyone, but that he had access to all the tokens he wanted and just kept piles of them in his car. I stopped following when I realized he was leading me to his car. I told him my mom would be mad. He tried to push that I follow him a little more, but gave up. Before I walked back inside, he asked for my AIM username, and I gave it to him, always excited for new friends on AIM. For those of you who don't know, AIM was an internet what is AIM? that was all the rage before smartphones and texting really became a thing. I don't huh. remember his username, all I know it was something with his name in it, which was Ben. I would sign on to AIM every single night, including that night after Chuck E. Cheese. I signed in, and I had a few friends online. Next thing I knew, I got a message from Ben, so I added him to my buddy list. He said, hey, it's Ben from earlier. I replied, what's up, and we started chatting. He chatted with me as if we were good friends already. I asked him how he was able to get all the tokens he wanted, and he said it's easy when you work there. He told right. me he was going to come to my house that night with a bunch of tokens. I told him, no, it's okay, and he told me, no, it's fine, you live really close to me anyway. I replied, how do you know where I live? Yeah, hey, how the he fuck? He said he followed my mom's van on our way home. I blocked his account immediately. I was beyond scared. I told my friends about it on AIM. Some of them said I should tell my parents or call the police. But I waited. Maybe he was bluffing. But no, he wasn't. Shit. I heard a truck pull up outside through my open window. I looked out the window and saw the black truck that Ben guy was leading me towards earlier. I saw him get out from the truck and I know he spotted me because he started walking over to my window. I pulled the window in and locked it and then shut the blind. By that point he was already halfway to my window and he was waving his arms at me. I ran to my mom to tell her. She didn't find it funny thinking I was kidding at first, but I convinced her after she looked out the window and saw the black truck begin to speed down the road. My mom wanted me to show her the AIM conversation, but I couldn't, as I had deleted him off my buddy list and blocked him. My parents called the police, of course, but that was just for peace of mind. They couldn't do anything besides make a report. The next day, my mom called the Chuck E. Cheese and asked about a Ben. They said they had no Bens who worked there. There were also no employees matching that guy's description. The Chuck Damn. E. Cheese eventually handed the CCTV footage from the day before to the police department for an investigation which turned up no results. My family never went to a Chuck E. Cheese ever again. Damn. Yeah, no, see. Two of those stories really got me, and they were both creepers, man. Like, why do people have to do that? Like, why, why can't you just let kids be kids, you know? Fucking creeps, man. Oh, um, but anyway, uh, God. Yeah, that's why I probably don't go to Chuck E. Cheese. That, that right there, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably why I don't go to Chuck E. Cheese. But anyway, if, uh, it's car alarm. Don't worry about it. Um, anyway. If y'all like this kind of content, go ahead and uh, hit the like button. And if you really like this, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe as well. Uh, but, uh, damn it. I can't, I can never do an outro without fucking up. But anyway, if you guys like this, um, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see, I'll see all of you in the, in the, in the next video. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Bye.